A while ago, Nvidia announced the RTX 4060 Ti, which has divided opinion among gamers. And also, the RTX 4060 that is meant for 1080p and maybe 1440p will be testing it in 4K resolution as well, just to show you how it will perform. There is no Founders Edition for the RTX 4060 this time, so we'll be testing the models from Palette instead. That is the Palette GeForce RTX 4060 Dual right here. We also compare it against an RTX 3060 Ti and of course the 4060 Ti for a quick performance gauge. For the starting MSRP of 299 US dollars, is the RTX 4060 actually worth the price? Let's find out in today's video. So a quick look at the card before we talk about the performance. This is the Palette RTX 4060 Dual. While the design will vary between brands or even between series, the port will be more or less the same. We can expect three display port and a single HDMI. Some other cards will come with triple fan, OC versions too, but we will talk about that next time. Now, if we take a look at the specs alone, the 4060 has lower shaders count compared to the 4060 Ti, but it still features the same 8GB GDDR6 memory, 32MB worth of L2 cache, 128-bit memory bus, and it uses 8 PCIe 4.0 lanes. That is not a problem since the PCIe Gen 4 with 8 lanes is the same speed as PCIe Gen 3 X16 lanes. Since the GPU doesn't require that high of bandwidth, then the 8 lanes is ready enough. It has a rated TGP that is pretty low at 115 watts, which makes it a reasonable option for a small form factor build or gaming PC build that is on a tight budget. All this that's focused on 1080p gaming. So before we begin with the test, here's a list of our test band specs just for you curious ones who wants to know what kind of specs we are using for this test. For the game's benchmark, since it's technically a card for 1080p gaming, we will talk about the 4K performance later. Starting off with the rest of performance, 1080p gaming is a piece of cake for all the cards we have tested. Seeing a minimum 70 FPS on average, and some even go up to 100 FPS on average on the titles we have tested. The 4060 can be seen performing similarly to the 3060 Ti on a few occasions, but the 3060 Ti is still slightly better if we look at the performance number as a whole. Then we scale it up to 1440p and all the three cards tested handle it fairly well. We can see at least 60 FPS on average on all the games we have tested, which some can even still go up to 100 FPS on average. There are exceptions like Cyberpunk and Watch Dogs Legions, but I'll say it's still a fairly good card. Moving on to the ray tracing performance, we are going for the usual, you know, high or ultra graphics presets and DLSS quality preset. At 1080p, the story is more or less the same as the rest of performance. It's better than the RTX 3060 Ti for some titles, but some titles are not just as good on the 4060. At 1440p, other than Watch Dogs, Legions, and Cyberpunk, the rest of the titles are actually playable on both the 4060 and 3060 Ti. Now for DLSS 3. I believe many of you already know what it's all about and the significant performance gain that we can get from frame generation technology. Despite some quirks like distortion and artifacts from inspecting frames by frames. From the recorded footage, we can see why Nvidia marketed the 4060 for 1080p gaming. There is about 3 times more performance when DLSS is enabled with frame generation. 
as we scale further up to 4K resolution, this is where we decide to not test it any further because 4K on the RTX 4060 is just... You can have a look at the footage yourself right now. You might think that having DLSS and frame generation can make 4K gaming possible at 30 FPS consistently, but no. We're getting at most 11 FPS on games like Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Ouch, I would say. Can we get more performance if we get an OC version of the RTX 4060 card then? We actually overclocked the palette card by increasing it by about 100 MHz. But the performance gains is not really that significant, so we just gave up. In the synthetic benchmarks, we can see a similar pattern in the performance between the 3060 Ti and 4060. For benchmark that focuses on game performance like 3 Mark and Unigine Superposition, the 3060 still scores better than the 4060 in every test. This gives us a better idea on how the 4060 will perform if the LSS is totally out of the picture. This means that unless you're gaming on titles that are actually DLSS 3 ready, the 3060 Ti will still perform better on most occasions. While 4060 does show better results in benchmark that focus more on content creation tasks such as Blender, Octane Bench 2020, V-Ray Benchmarks 5, it's not to the point that it's totally overpowering the 3060 Ti. And for the power draw and thermals, I'd say it's pretty great for this card in these aspects. People will argue that the 4060 perform much less the same or sometimes slower than the 3060, but hey, it's actually drawing only about 110 or 121 watts. For the performance it can deliver with this kind of power draw, it's pretty fair I'll say. As for the thermals, the highest GPU temperature during peak load recorded at 72.5 degrees Celsius and the hotspot temperature at 88.9 degrees Celsius. Other models from other partners might yield different results when it comes to this, but there shouldn't be too much of a difference with most dual fan cooler designs. Based on the test results, I'd say the 4060 is definitely a great card for 1080p gaming. And that's pretty much it. It's very similar to the 3060 Ti on most occasions, and despite being marketed as a graphics card for 1080p gaming, it's still capable of 1440p gaming to a certain extent. Some might say it's yet again an utter disappointment, but there are definitely things that they might have overlooked. While the 4060 is more or less the same as the 3060 Ti in terms of the raw performance, the fact that it's actually drawing almost 50% less power to deliver this kind of performance is already impressive enough. Small form factor builds can opt in for this card and use more affordable power supplies that's below 500 watts. You can even enjoy new features like DLSS 3, AV1 video encoding, and other AI accelerated features as well. Of course, there are users that are still not really into these features and I won't argue on that. If you are one of the users who really needs these features, the 4060 is the most affordable option you can have right now. With that being said, I think that $299 US is a fair price for the 4060. For Twitch streamers, you could even get the RTX 4060 as a secondary card and offload the AV1 encoding to this card while your main card focuses on getting the most FPS possible. If you don't need any of that, you can actually just consider getting a 3060 Ti or even a 3070. They are about the same price in the second hand market right now. So that's all for this video. What's your take on the 4060? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and I'll see you all in the next one.